Good morning and thank you for joining us today for our information session on new access for small business owners. I would like to start by saying that Beyond Blue acknowledges the traditional owners of the land on which we stand, the Wurundjeri people of Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to elders past, present and future. And as an organisation with national reach, we extend our respect to all elders and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across Australia. Beyond Blue acknowledges those who are living with and managing mental health conditions such as anxiety and depression, their families, friends, supporters, and those affected by suicide. My name is Mel Novak, and I'm the Small Business Engagement Manager from Beyond Blue. We're absolutely thrilled to invite you to this information session today and talk you through what this program is about, why it is needed, and most importantly, who the session is designed to help small business owners in Australia. We will also share with you today some data, insights and trends that are emerging already at this early stage of the program. We hope that you will find this session valuable and will go on to promote this within your network and or directly with any small business owners that you know who may be in need of mental health support. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions using the raise a hand icon shown on your screens. We will answer any questions at a Q&A session at the end of the presentation and endeavour to answer all the questions that you have. If we don't get around to answering all your questions, we will reach out to you individually at the end of the session. I'm joined today by Dylan Foley, who is our new Access for Small Business Lead, who will be presenting with me today. I'm also excited to let you know that we have a new Access coach joining us today who will introduce themselves to you, share their journey with you, and also answer any questions that you may have. So I'm sure that you are as excited as I am to learn more about this wonderful new program. So without further ado, please let me hand you over to Dylan, who will introduce new access for small business owners. Thanks, Mel. Um, so I just want to take you through, firstly, what is New Access for Small Business Owners and how it was conceived. So New Access for Small Business Owners um, is a jointly conceived initiative by Beyond Blue and the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise and Bondsman. Um, the program was designed by Beyond Blue and is delivered in partnership with the Richmond Fellowship Queensland and thanks to Commonwealth funding from the Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources. It was born in late 2020, um, triggered by the impact of the pandemic on small businesses and the findings from a federal government report into small business mental health and how best to support small businesses when they face these types of challenges. The service itself is fully funded and there's no cost to the participants who are accessing it. At the moment, it's been funded for 12 months with bookings being taken from small business owners from Monday the 15th of March this year until approximately March 2022 next year. Our new access coaches have a small business background and will apply a practical approach to problem solving with participants to equip them with practical tools to manage daily life stresses so that they can move forward from their challenges. Across six sessions, the coach will guide the participant through a tailored program using low intensity cognitive behavioral therapy, which aims to help break the cycle of unhelpful thoughts. The program is also 100% confidential and does not require a doctor's referral or mental health treatment plan and is delivered by relatable coaches. The program is also delivered with clinical oversight and clear escalation and referral pathways, including to other business supports and financial counseling services. Finally, the program is easily accessible either by phone or video call during the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., making it easy for business owners who typically have little free time to engage with the service. So just a bit about why does New Access work? Um, so New Access is a program that has been operating in Australia for nearly a decade now, starting with a pilot phase in 2013 to 2016 across three pilot sites on the East Coast. Independent research and evaluations have confirmed its efficacy and ability to be scaled as a low intensity early intervention service. 
The new access for small business service is modeled on Beyond Blue's existing new access service, which is currently available around 12 sites um, in Australia and also through um, a number of other services. So what is the new access program? The new access offers a treatment course of one-on-one -on -one sessions with a coach who has been trained in a type of self-guided therapy called low intensity cognitive behavioral therapy. The program allows participants to recognize the way they think, act and feel. Participants work with a coach on an individual plan that they develop together. Is, and because it's so practical, people take away helpful skills with them that they can use in their daily lives. Coaches deliver this therapy, which has a strong evidence base and a long history of efficacy under clinical supervision. New access is also designed to appeal to people who might not otherwise help, um, otherwise seek support for their mental health and to provide this support early, preventing symptoms from potentially getting worse. The program also avoids clinical language, does not require a doctor's referral, and is delivered by relatable coaches. And in this case, people have owned a small business of their own, making an ideal service for small business owners. The new access program also has a really strong evidence base. So a person's progress is measured each week, so we can see how they're tracking and how they're moving towards recovery. Since 2013, the New Access Program has supported almost 13,000 people and it has demonstrated clinically validated average recovery rates of 70% in the general population and up to 80% in workplaces. It was also supported by peer-reviewed research, which has found that 7 out of 10 people who have used New Access reported a significant reduction in depression and anxiety symptoms. And finally, the New Access service is based on a very long history of 60 years of evidence of the benefits of cognitive behavioural therapy. So a couple of the reasons of now of why people love new access. Well, there is a strong evidence base for the effectiveness, effectiveness of new access in supporting the mental health of its participants. It is also a program that appeals strongly to the people that it was designed for. History has shown us that new access is a program that people love, not only because it is free and fully confidential, and not only because it does not require a doctor's referral, but because it's easily accessible. Something that is very important for a time poor small business owner. People also love the program because it offers pragmatic, practical tools which can be implemented um, in their day-to-day -day lives. And this can appeal to the very nature of small business owners who tend to use pragmatic thinking in their day-to-day -day business lives. This is a key point of difference of the new access to small business owners service and part of the unique nature of the program. People also love New Access because of its client-centered approach. It takes a very collaborative um, approach to the way it works with the client and the coach. It is collaborative and consultative. The client and coach work together, step by step, to find out exactly what recovery looks like for that person, and it is not prescriptive or clinical in any way. The program is loved by those that go through it, and as can be seen by the wonderful testimonies we receive from those who benefit from the program. You can see in your screen a testimony from a new access participant from one of our PHN sites, speaking about the practical and effective nature of the program. And as the NASBO service continues, we will seek um, to receive similar testimonies such as this, and we'll be able to share that with you um, and your other stakeholders. I will now pass you to Mel, who will talk a bit more about why new access was chosen to support the small business owner community. So why was New Access chosen to support small business owners? The program was largely underpinned by government research, which found that two thirds of Australian small business owners reported that the pandemic had severely negatively impacted their mental health. And as we all know, many, many parts of the community had already been doing it tough with a compounding impact of drought and floods. The research highlighted that the small small business owners had deep concerns about time, cost, and the accessibility of mental health support. It needs, and in fact, there was a great deal of stigma within the small business owner community around reaching out for help when help was needed. Interestingly, the research did show that. 
small business owners who do reach out for help are more likely to seek help from a friend or a trusted advisor, someone who understands their context for information, advice and support. The research also demonstrated that small business owners have a deep desire for options when it comes to mental health accessibility, such as being able to seek help online or over the phone. These findings from the research have really helped to shape the development of the new Access for Small Business program. It's why our coaches have been specifically chosen to come from a small business background themselves to mean that they are more relatable in their nature. It's also why the program is so accessible. It's free, it's av available via telehealth, and it's also available online. It's also available between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And it doesn't require a doctor's referral meaning therefore that it's ideal for a small business owner. Perhaps one of the greatest issues with trying to help this group is that a strong paradox exists. Small business owners are a group that are under intense pressure and also have a definitive need for support. Yet, in addition to being time poor, prioritizing their business and themselves, the known and the known stigma surrounding mental health and reaching out. Small business owners are used to being successful. They don't, they don't want, they don't, sorry, they don't want to be considered as weak or in need, and they're used to supporting others and providing help to others. They're not used to getting it in return. Whatever the reason for not reaching out, needed support cannot be provided if it's not known that support is required. New Access aims to bridge a gap and break down the paradox by giving small business owners the confidence and courage to reach out via trusted advisors and intermediaries and get the support that they need. Some interesting research from a recent report identified some of the main stresses for small business owners. Now I want to first say that we know how passionate and knowledgeable all of you attending today are about this topic. And we know that you know better than, than us what the main stresses are for small business owners. But we wanted to share some of this research with you. Running a small business, particularly during times of social and economic uncertainty and hardship, can take a really heavy toll on a small business owner. Working long hours, cash flow, social isolation, and balancing work are all of the challenges small business owners face. Not surprisingly, these factors can also affect a business owner's mental health and well-being. The fallout caused by COVID-19 has really exacerbated these stresses, whilst adding enormous uncertainty. Pre-pandemic, around one third of small business owners reported having high, level, high levels of psychological, psychological distress. Now two thirds of small business owners say that the pandemic has negatively affected their mental health. The research demonstrated that while a variety of factors are causing stress for small business owners, some issues were rated more highly than others. And those that scored particularly highly were worrying about the impact of work on family, cash flow and business profitability. New access can provide support for the impact of these stresses, the impact that these stresses have on a person's mental health. Whilst it's important to mention these, it's also important to mention that new access for small business is not a business advisory service. However, it does provide clear signposting for other business supports, such as financial counselling. And let me pass back over to Dylan to cover who's eligible for the program. Thanks, Mel. Um, so for the purposes of discussing this next slide, I'd like to speak to who is eligible for the program, um, but then also what type of people are suitable for a new access intervention. So firstly, just around eligibility, um, the new access for small business owners program is for anyone aged 18 or over who owns a small business or is a uh, or as a sole trader. For the purposes of this program's eligibility, we, we have defined a small business as having 20 or fewer employees. Um, but that being said, the program is currently operating with a no wrong door approach. And if people contact the service seeking support and self-identify as a business owner, they can enter the program. 
We know that the initial step of seeking support is difficult and we want to ensure um, that strict eligibility criteria and too much questioning at the intake process do not serve as a barrier to entry into the program. We're working closely with RFQ and um, our other stakeholders with the department to continually assess this criteria and how we go depend on the demand and capacity of the service. But we are really keen to make sure that those seeking support um, can find it very easy to access the program. So in terms now of just what type of people might be eligible for the new access program, that we look at a couple of things which go towards one is that if they're currently seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist, um, they're not suitable for the new access program. This is more around not mixing different types of interventions um, and that, you know, you can have seen a psychologist or psychiatrist in the past, um, but it's just not having them at the same time concurrently. Um, it's, it's a bit of a mixed um, bag there. So we ask people that, yeah, if they're currently seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist, but they're not suitable at the time to um, enter the new access program. And we also want to point out here that people de dealing with severe and complex mental health issues um, are not suitable for the new access program, with it being a lower intensity intervention. They're probably more suitable for higher intensity services. And so at the initial assessment that's conducted by a clinically supervised coach, we can identify, the, identify um, if new access for small business owners is the most appropriate service um, for people's mental health needs, and that assessment can be made at that point. Finally, I also just want to um, iterate um, that this is not a service for those looking specifically for business mentoring, business advice or business coaching. And while we'll absolutely signpost and refer people to those services, um, it's just not a service support. It is, sorry, it is just a service to support the mental health needs of its participants. So I just want to use this slide to illustrate the step care model of mental health. And some of you might be familiar with um, this concept. Um, and just to explain it a bit, it goes in ascending order based on the increasing resource intensity of the intervention, plus also the consumer's need. Um, so this model, of, uh, this model of care aims to meet the needs of the person with the most appropriate level of care. So just quickly, the five levels of care are level one, self-management, which is when people are working on their own to manage their own mental health. Level two is low intensity services. Level three is moderate intensity services. Level four is high intensity services, which can be more of your higher intensity psychology or psychiatrist um, interventions. And then also there's the highest level five, which is acute and specialist community mental health services that deliver those um, more higher, sorry, those higher intensity services. So the majority of people um, experiencing anxiety or depression fall within the first three levels and new access for small business owners fits mostly in level two with a bit into level three, whereas a service designed for people with low to moderate symptoms of anxiety and depression, and that's speaking to the consumer need, um, but is also a time-limited intervention of its six sessions which speaks to then its low intensity of resource um, intervention. So it's also here a good thing to note that people aren't stuck on one level of this all the time. Um, it's that things may change for people on the journey and a different intervention may be needed. And the new access totally supports this through the program. Initially at the assessment phase, if they're deemed um, to need higher intensity support, but also at every subsequent session, we do look at the clinical outcomes and, and make sure that there is monitoring of this to ensure that if a person's circumstances change or their needs change, that they will be stepped up to a higher level of intensity um, services if that's what they need. So now I just want to speak um, to the pathways to the program. So we've gone through who the new access the small business program is appropriate for and who is eligible. Um, and now I want to take you through how we, and hopefully with your help, are engaging with those small business owners. So our primary approach to reaching small business owners with the program is through those channels where they already go for business information and support. And this is shown here on the industry pathways um, part of the slide in the middle. 
And we are leveraging the trusted small business stakeholders, channels and advisors such as yourself to promote the program. We know that this is an integral, integral way to engage small business owners and we appreciate your support in these endeavours and we are really conscious of meeting the person where they are to make sure that access to the program is easy um, and the awareness is there. We'll complement this primary approach um, with community pathways through, you know, family and friends, GPs, but also with direct to small business owner marketing campaigns. So after building that awareness through those primary channels, we're also bolstering that with um, information and research that we're presenting on the Beyond Blue website under the NASBO web pages. So on that web pages, you'll be able to share these with your channels, but also people will be able to access it to find out more about the service. It'll have information, education, and testimonials about the program. And then it can also then have um, a form and details about how to inquire to the program. So following the awareness raising and the channels we're using um, and consolidating that with the information on the website, the person then makes a decision to inquire. And again, speaking to trying to keep the program as accessible as possible. Um, people can inquire via phone, email, or web form through the Beyond Blue website. So once the person makes contact through either of those ways, we also make a point of it that the service will contact that person back within 48 hours to conduct a short intake process to see if they're eligible for the program. And then um, if they are accepted into the program, they'll be assigned a coach and an initial assessment will be booked in preferably within seven days um, of that initial inquiry. So also at this stage, um, after that assessment session, as I said before, if they aren't suitable for the program or if they provide or if they need a higher level of support, they will be provided with either alternative support options or referred to a higher um, intensity option. So now that I've just gone through how we're engaging small business owners with the program and how they can access it, I would now like to touch on briefly what it looks like to go through the program as a participant. And you won't just have to take my word for it as well. Um, and after I take you through this, we have one of our excellent coaches to also tell you about the program and how it works. So I'm just gonna go through this quickly and step by step. There's quite a bit um, obviously in how the program is delivered and their evidence and processes behind it. Feel free to ask more questions um, and we'll answer them at the end. And also we can follow up with more information after the session. So initially there is, as I said before, the intake. Um, and so this person usually self-refers or with their consent is supported to contact the program, which as I said, can be done by phone, email, or directly online. The new, in, new access intake officer at this stage considers eligibility criteria get up intake into the program. This is a pretty quick um, session um, just to make sure that they're eligible and appropriate for the service. Um, and then most of the work then is done in the assessment um, to determine suitability. So moving from that inquiry stage, we then book in the initial assessment, which is typically a 60 minute session, a bit longer in length than the subsequent one. And the client and the new access coach work together to conduct this session together um, over the phone or via video conference. At this time as well, a series of questionnaires are asked and answered, um, and a problem statement is determined. And this problem statement will go through the program with them. Um, also at this stage, they will create action plans and self-completion tasks are established. And the next appointment session is made. So following the assessment session, there is up to five phone sessions, or phone or video, sorry, for 30 minutes um, in length each. During this stage, um, it allows for the low intensity CBT tools of reflection, clarification, um, also guidance revision. And at every session as well, we do take again the outcome measures to determine where the person is and how they're trending towards recovery, but also to make sure that they are still, um, that new access is still an appropriate service for them. They do not need to be stepped up. Um, so we do continue to review um, their appropriateness so at the end of every session as well, the next appointment is made. Um, it is typically a week to week um, style proposition. So we would have um, a session every week for up to six weeks, but obviously we are flexible with our coaches 
um, and um, with the timing that can be offered. And as I did say, it is just very important that that step review is a key, key component of this um, step care model of service and that it does involve and objectively measuring the client outcomes at every session so that the client can be allocated to their appropriate level of care. Um, just wanted to note here as well, one of the other things that might come off um, with how this is structured and the sort of rigid nature of it, it may seem quite rigid in terms of how the service is delivered and I guess the protocols and processes at each stage. Um, but this is, but also the person receives the intervention of CBT that responds best to their circumstances and their problem statement and goals. It's also proven, um, it's also the proven or evidence-based manner of the um, model that delivers the results. So sticking closely to this process is really what, how we know that this service can deliver the results for all the type of people that may come to the program, particularly um, small business owners. Um, and we have found that drift from the model and protocols reduces the effectiveness of the intervention. So we can go into more, I could go into a lot more detail about this, um, and we can answer some more questions either later or in um, follow-up to this. But to um, I want, now I really want to pass you on to Lawrence Atkinson, who's one of our excellent new access to small business coaches, who will tell you a bit more about himself, his experience and the service. So over to you, Lawrence. Thank you, Dylan. Um, just a little bit about myself. I, uh, my family and I left Perth in 1970 to travel to London with my father's job. And after finishing my secondary education in the UK, I joined the Bank of New South Wales, now Westpac. In 1984, my wife and I married, and seven weeks later, I took up a role of Westpac's Middle East representative in Bahrain. I returned to Australia in late 1986 and left Westpac in 1988. Over the next several years, I had a variety of roles, including rejoining Westpac twice, in fact, with one of those roles heading up the Business Advisory and Migration Service Unit nationally, and also being posted to Papua New Guinea in 1997. I returned to Sydney in December 2000 and was subsequently retrenched four months later as part of a cost-cutting exercise the bank went through at that time. My wife and I started our first small business in 1991, which we held for many years, but subsequently wound up upon returning from Papua New Guinea. Our next business, which we still have, began in 2010 and is a holding company for two businesses, which we run separately, but are owned jointly. So one for him and one for her. Over the years, I have worked in my own business, along with time spent managing other people's businesses or business units, such as uh, my time in Westpac. After leaving Westpac in 2001, I went on to manage several professional services firms in either general manager or CEO roles. And those firms included a firm of patent attorneys, a commercial law firm, and more recently, a firm of chartered accountants. I've also enjoyed senior roles in two executive search firms, and indeed, that's largely what I've done in my own business. I've also held directorships in several not-for-profit organizations, including executive chairman for a facility for disabled people on the central coast of New South Wales and treasurer of the Australian Institute of Training and Development. Whilst in Bahrain, I worked in a voluntary capacity uh, in a small film production company during my spare time. In Papua New Guinea, in addition to being head of sales and service for Westpac, I was on the board of governors for the Port Moresby International High School and on the management committees of both the Port Moresby Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the PNG Institute of Banking and Business Management. I was also a member of my second Rotary Club, wherein I was awarded a Paul Harris Fellowship. I'm currently the Vice President of the Blue Mountains Regional Business Chamber, and it was in that capacity that I attended the Prime Minister's Small Business Bushfire Recovery Forum in January last year. At that meeting, I met and spoke with Minister Michaelia Cash regarding the issues our members were facing, including mental health issues. I subsequently had a meeting with the Small Business Wellbeing Unit at the Department of Industry and Science and provided some research data to that team at the time. We stayed in touch and last December, I was advised that recruitment was beginning for the NASBO program and decided to apply as I felt that with my experience and my direct knowledge of people who were suffering, I might be able to be of some assistance if I was successful in gaining a position as a coach. What I've learned since becoming a coach and taking on this role 
is that it is truly a great service that is being provided. The early intervention with reasonably quick results over that six week period that we've been able to provide for people who may well have suffered deeper levels of anxiety and depression had they not been able to access the service is actually quite remarkable. Our service provides an assessment and treatment over six weeks, as Dylan's just explained, and I've been able to witness firsthand the change in people's demeanour and character because of the interventions provided through cognitive behaviour therapy. I have to say it gives us coaches a heartfelt feeling of accomplishment, knowing that we've been able to help people through situations that when we first met, they would have seen as unsurmountable. Having been through depression myself some years ago, I wish this service had been available then as it would have prevented me from falling into the depths that I found myself in. Many of the business owners are suffering because of the pandemic, especially with some of my clients who've been reliant on overseas staff and now have no or very little staff yet still have contracts to fulfill. However, others are going through normal life situations which they're working through with our help. One example is that of a senior fellow who was in a high profile, high performance role one day and then retired the next, essentially from a high flyer to a no flyer. Although he had set himself up in his own business, he could not understand why he was struggling with a lack of motivation, being irritable and angry, and just snapping at family for no apparent reason. Until we started to work with him, he had not realized that he was experiencing the beginnings of depression, caused largely by the loss of the highly active senior role he once held. Once we were able to provide coaching using our CBT tools, he very quickly recovered and is, according to what he tells me, his wife tells him, a very changed man. I am seeing mostly one and two person businesses at the present. I have one business that has five staff. Uh, they have a range of issues from excessive worry through high levels of anxiety, depression, a feeling of being overwhelmed, but problem solving seems to be an issue at the top of the list, given what's happening with, with the pandemic and other situations they find themselves in. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions in the Q&A session and uh, would like to hand back to, to Dylan right now. Thank you. Thanks, Lance. Um, it's always great to hear from our coaches and the great work you're doing, and we're very lucky to have you on board with the program. Um, now I'd just like to briefly touch on some of the data that we're seeing um, coming into the program, um, but also some of the data we are collecting um, and, and may be able to share with you going forward to inform some of your work um, and, and how we reach out and engage with this community. Um, so first I just wanna a, a little bit talk about how the reach of the program, um, which is available to all Australians, um, which is a very exciting thing for new access and for small business owners, um, We've even had inquiries from as far as Christmas in Cocos Islands, um, which was very exciting for us. Um, that's, that's really great that our message has gone that far and wide already. Um, but also, as you can see um, from Lawrence, um, that the number and type of people that we have attracted um, who have applied to be coaches is nothing short of extraordinary. We've had a really high caliber of people wanting to support this community. And we're really lucky that um, we're able to sort of deploy them in that way. Um, but also, as some of you may aware, some of you may be aware, we started this program with a soft launch in um, March 15th um, to make sure that we could understand just how the service is rolling out and start engaging with those channels and get the operations and the coaches just up to speed um, with the type of service that they're delivering. Um, so since that March 15th, though, we've had a really good number of people through the program. There's been approximately 90 people um, who have started the program since March 15th. Um, and also of those people that are inquiring, the overwhelming majority are looking for this type of support, indicating that the need for the program is there and that the excellent work of yourselves um, and our marketing engagement team is targeting the right people to the service. I'd also just quickly like to touch on some of the data we're collecting for the programs because one of the amazing things about the new access program is that we collect really valuable um, outcomes data that is useful both for the, um, the participants but also for the people delivering the service. So as I said before, we do collect outcome data at the end of each session, um, which is clinically validated tools based on the PHQ9, K10, GAD7, 
so um, markers of anxiety and depression. And when we take those and we can see how people are improving week to week um, over the program and we can see that they have reached um, what we call recovery, which is getting below um, a certain level um, on, on those outcomes. So it's really valuable that we can see that we are actually making a difference. Also with this, we're also, we collect data on each session so we can see when people enter the program, why they entered the program. We can also see when they leave the program. So this is really valuable in terms of whether or not we're targeting the right people, whether the right people are coming to the service, and whether it's meeting their needs, um, depending on how they come in. Across with this as well, we are collecting um, demographic data. So we'll be able to see not just, you know, who this is working for um, and, and what type of people, but we'll also be able to drill down and see what type of groups it may be working for or maybe some that it's not working as well for. Um, and this will also include some data around the small business people. So we'll be able to understand what industries are coming, which may be, which may be the ones that we are either prioritising and targeting or they're the ones reaching out the most for support. We'll be able to see that. We'll also be able to see, as Lawrence touched on briefly, the, the, type, the number of employees that each person sort of comes with. So we'll be able to understand the types of issues that um, different types of small business owners um, are experiencing. And finally, with all that, we also have collect experience data at the end of the service, just in just to understand if the service met people's needs and whether it was good and appropriate for what they were looking for, which would be really valuable in terms of pushing this program forward and sort of feeding back to yourself that this is the type of thing that small business owners are looking for. Um, I'll now pass you on back to Mel. So we'll finish off our presentation with a bit more information um, on our phased approach to engagement and how you can help us going forward. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Dylan. Um, it's really interesting covering off on the data because in the work that we've been doing with our industry partners, we've, we've seen this overwhelming desire to learn more about the data and we think that just shows such a willingness to, to, to help. Um, and a willingness to see where this fits with your own communities, which is just so encouraging. Um, and to, of course, working together with our industry partners, such as, yourself, such as yourself, is perhaps one of the most important ways for us to reach small business owners. Um, given the limited capacity of the service, we have had to take a very considered approach. Um, so it has been a staged approach in terms of in terms of our marketing and promotion, and that has been very um, deliberate. Uh, we have thought this through, and we have had a very clear strategy. Ultimately, we have had to have a controlled approach to, in order to monitor demand because we we haven't really known what demand was going to be like, and we wanted to avoid wait lists because if people are in need and they have to, to wait for a service, that, that could be quite damaging. Um, we wanted to ensure that participants had a great user experience. So from here, uh, we will drive momentum even further through our key partner channels um, and later through wider industry and key state and local channels. But right now, this is the first step and that's why we're involving you because we want to continue to work with you and really bring you on board at the ground level. This is really important that we involve you as much as possible here um, and bring you on board for the ongoing education and support over the next year to drive sector awareness and industry engagement. Our goal is really to get people talking about new access for small business, sharing information, sharing information about new access for small business, and ultimately referring new access for small business um, to small business owners who may be in need for, who may be in need of support. So we keep being asked the question, and funnily enough, um, in the questions uh, that were being asked, even in this session, I'm being asked, how can we help? Um, and it's, it's so wonderful to hear that question. Um, and I think it just shows the willingness of people to really get on board and, and help this community. Um, the short answer to this question, how can we help, is to spread awareness through your networks and your channels. Um, we do have additional information and resources available to you to support you with this. So following on from today's session, we will be distributing, distributing a comprehensive stakeholder pack to all of you. Um, the pack will include community-facing resources for both small business 
supporters like yourself, but also small business owners. So it can be distributed directly to small business owners that you know. There'll be key messaging, there'll be content that could be shared perhaps on your social media or in newsletters. There'll be digital assets, there'll be physical assets, um, which you can order through us. Please bear in mind that physical assets have a three week lead time. So if you are planning on any events or promotional um, opportunities, just, just build that time into, into your plans. Um, and the only thing that we ask is please keep us aware of anything that you're planning, any promotion that you're planning or marketing, just so that we can build that in uh, to help us manage demand from our end. That would be really, really helpful. So we have reached that time in the session for our question and answers. And we've actually had a few questions so far. So please use the, the blue raise a hand question on your screen if you have any questions. Uh, and we have had a few so far. So I might just uh, start the ball rolling. Um, and I might direct this one for you, Dylan, if that's okay. Um, so you touched upon this earlier, and it's really to do with eligibility. Um, what alternative support options will be provided if someone is found to be not eligible for the program? Thanks, Mel. Um, so as I said before, if people, if the new access service isn't appropriate, um, we can um, refer people to higher level um, intensity services. So that may be to GPs or other services. Um, if they are experiencing um, a crisis at the time of calling, we'll absolutely refer them to crisis support services or triple zero. Um, if they're not eligible for the service in the sense that they're looking for another type of support, say business mentoring, business advice, things like that, we do have the ability to Prefer them on to at the moment small business advisory, financial counselling, um, but we're also looking to build in a few more um, referral pathways, especially with um, more local um, services as the program develops and as we um, speak to our stakeholders. That's great. And Dylan, just following on from that, we have had a couple of questions wanting to explore if if someone has a, has inquired about the program who is already seeing a, a psychologist, perhaps for a, a mental health condition, um, obviously they're not going to be eligible for this program. Why is that? Yes, thanks, Mel. As, as I said before, just with the um, type of intervention, the long intensity CBT, um, it's not um, suitable for that event, intervention to be happening at the time of another intervention. So it's just counter-therapeutic to have those um, two inter interventions working side by side delivered by two different people. Um, so then we just ask that if you are currently seeking um, that other support, um, that new access probably isn't right for you at this time and probably won't be as effective as it would be. I mean, it's not, just want to reiterate as well, it's not that if you've had that support in the past, it's just whether it's happened concurrently as well. Okay, fantastic. Now, Lawrence, you're getting a lot of uh, love in the questions. Um, people were really impressed by uh, your contribution. Um, and somebody's actually wanted to ask how, how um, well first of all we're very complimentary um, about your contribution but also wanted to ask how much time do you dedicate to coaching per week I'm engaged um, as a part-timer so I'm I'm working Monday to Thursday um, and it's a, a full-time part-time job so 8 30 to 4 30 are my hours um, at the moment so uh, that's the, that's the time that I devote to it Okay, fantastic. And Dylan, I might direct this one to you. If a person accessing the support isn't the actual business owner but manages the business, can they access the program? So at the moment, we are, as I said before, with the eligibility, and um, we are looking for small business owners. But if people call the service and reach out um, and identify the small business owners, we know that a lot of groups may not necessarily self-identify as that. Um, and so at the moment we are taking um, people who, who say that, um, but it is for small business owners and we are trying through our marketing engagement efforts to make that clear. Um, part of that is just that's the audience that um, 
we're targeting and that's what we're funded to deliver to. Um, but at this moment, we, we, we would definitely support someone who sort of identifies um, as owning that business, whether or not it's technical in that nature or not, because we know that that's quite a difficult thing for some people to just sort of, that's how they identify. But so um, at the moment, yes, um, we would support those people. Yeah, it sounds like there's quite a broad definition. Um, and also at the follow-up stages, we've had a question with regard to what happens at the follow-up stages. So once all the sessions have been completed and you've had your two follow-up sessions, um, if there's still some issues that have been identified, what additional support can be provided or, or, or where is the participant directed? that one month and six months, which follow a, a pretty similar approach to the follow-up sessions during the six-week course of treatment. So each of those stages as well, we will collect the clinical outcomes um, and, and go through how people are going as well. Um, so at that stage, if they're, if they're still in need of support, um, we will refer them to a higher intensity level of treatment, most likely to a GP. Um, just to sort of say that this, we, we did this course of treatment and we still require support. Um, it's not designed to have sort of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, um, courses of new access. Um, if that person, though, say in six months is experiencing a different type of issue that's causing them stress, that might be suitable for new access as well. Um, but if they are still needing um, support sort of after a six-month period, we can refer them again to those. We do do that assessment about what appropriate service would be right for them. Um, and we can also, again, do the signposting and referrals to other services, so maybe it's financial counselling or small business advisory or things like that as well. Okay. And Dylan, I might direct this question at you as well. Is, are farmers eligible for the program? And, and maybe elaborating on that, is, how, is there any industry that isn't eligible? Yeah, for sure. Um, so all industries are eligible for the program, um, including farmers. Um, I think we know that some farmers may not identify as small business owners, um, depending on the nature of their work. Um, but as I said, it's, it's anyone um, who is a small business owner who employs 20 or fewer people, so there's no revenue um, thing like that, that a cap on it or, thing, or anything like that. Um, so it's more about targeting um, just anyone who might see themselves that way. And, and we can work with you and your stakeholders to try and tailor our message to make sure that, you know, we can use language that's appropriate for those sort of audiences, um, but there's definitely, it's open to all industries, um, just anyone who sort of says that they're a small business owner. Perfect. Um, Lawrence, we've had a question around your training. What training did you receive when you first started? Thanks for that question. Uh, we had a, a very intensive six-week training course from the CBTI uh, Cognitive Behaviour Therapy Institute. Um, it was intensive, I've got to say, very intensive over six weeks, our, our cohort, and that continues for, um, for 12 months. So I have um, clinical supervision every week with my clinical supervisor, and then there's group supervision with a team of, of coaches once a month, and uh, that, that goes through for uh, a period of 12 months, and we are assessed on what we uh, have achieved over that 12 month period at the end of, of that time. So there's constant supervision, constant um, checking in with us to make sure we are, uh, I think Dylan mentioned fidelity to the model, um, to make sure that uh, we are sticking with that model and it's all around uh, what we've been taught in the CBT training. Fantastic. Now I might just ask, one more question. I'm just going to pick one. Um, I might direct this one at you, Lawrence, again, if that's okay. In the initial assessment, what kind of questions are asked? We do an initial introduction, just uh, setting the scene and, and agenda, uh, what we're going to do, how the program of treatment is going to work. And then we ask questions about what the main problem is that they're client is experiencing at the moment. Uh, there is a functional assessment that we use. It's all very um, structured, although fairly flexible. We work through what the problem the client is experiencing, when it happens, where it happens, if it's affected by other people, if there are any triggers. 
we look for a specific incidents if they can relate specific times and places where a, an incident or an episode might occur. We then also go on to using the uh, the clinical questionnaires, the PHQ-9, the um, GAD-7, the um, uh, work and uh, social structure analysis, those types of questions. And then we form um, a, a rationale for treatment, uh, which is a, a maintenance cycle, which is um, we, we, we do that in conjunction with the client. So we actually get them to draw the diagram, which they keep and we refer back to. So it's a joint participation. And we refer to that uh, throughout the treatment. And then we seek for them to provide a problem statement. So we help them construct that paragraph of a few sentences of what the problem is, how they're feeling about it, what impact that is having on their lives. And then we set a couple of end of treatment goals. Um, so that whole process uh, uh, takes about an hour, sometimes a little over. Fantastic. Thank you so much for answering those questions for our audience. And to everybody who asked a question today who we haven't had time to get to, um, we will come back to you all individually with a with a uh, comprehensive answer to your question. But thank you for uh, asking your questions today. Now, um, our final slide, we hope that you found our information session of value today. Our next information session will be held on the 19th of May, uh, and we will send out a registration link uh, later on today, inviting you to that session. The purpose of the next session is to provide guidance and, uh, and insight into how to actually refer somebody to the new access for small business program um, and how to recommend this program to someone who may be in need of help. We suggest extending this invite out to your teams who work directly with small business owners. And please bear in mind that it's not essential um, for somebody to have attended today's session to attend the next session. We will be running further information sessions throughout the year to provide you with education and training on new access for small business. Um, and please, by all means, get in touch if you would like to discuss this further, or if you think you or your teams would benefit from additional information to support you um, in sharing this program with others. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dylan and Lawrence for kindly assisting me in today's presentation and for doing such a wonderful job. I'd also like to thank all attendees, particularly the stakeholders in the audience who have contributed so generously to the development and growth of the program. The willingness to support this program and get behind small business owners in Australia has been truly inspiring. We've been humbled and moved by the efforts so many have made to bring new access to small business to life. So thank you. Thank you so much, everybody.